got there, Murray? Well, what does it look like? I'm changing my ribbon. The other one's worn out. A good workman never blames his tools. <laughs> a good workman doesn't have to write for one. Hey, you two. You're starting kind of early today, aren't you? You're right, Mayor. You're right. Ted, I apologize. <laughs> Yeah, wait. Look where he did it. What's gotten into you today? No, he's just jealous because I'm going to Chicago and he isn't. Huh? What makes you so sure Lou's going to pick you? Well, he's certainly going to pick someone who can't even change a typewriter ribbon. Pick someone for what? What's all this about Chicago? Well, Lou got a call last night. They want us to send one delegate to the broadcasters' convention. Three whole days. Everything paid for. Where do you want to go? You're married. What's that got to do with it? Come on, Mary. Guys at a convention in a hotel in a strange town. That suggests a certain atmosphere? Yeah, it sure does. A bunch of middle-aged drunks in funny hats asking some cab driver where the action is. <laughs> cab driver, huh? <laughs> well, I take it you're not interested in being our delegate. Me? No, no way. Oh, wait, Murray, you don't suppose with my bad luck you'd that I'm You'd be wasted gonna... on you. You're not a guy. You don't even have credit cards. <laughs> anyway, what are we arguing? Lou's gonna make up his own mind. Nothing we say is gonna influence him. Lou, let me go to the convention. <laughs> yeah, his mother was up all night sewing name tapes into his shorts. Why do you guys wanna go so much? Well, it's a chance to see Chicago again. Take in a couple of restaurants, go to a basketball game, have some drinks with the guys. Just have a little fun. Maybe you're right. I'll go. <laughs> Let me go, Lou. What do you got against me? What did I ever do to you, huh? <laughs> there you are, Lou. I tracked you to your lair. My lair? Oh, sure. I always think of you as a big, gruff bear. You hide in here and growl at people, but you have a playful side, too. Yeah. <laughs> The bear is the clown of the animal world, Lou. His lumbering gait conceals a prancing spirit. I always think of you that way. Prancing. Crouching, skulking in your lair until just the right moment comes to rush outside and kill someone. I don't always have to rush outside. <laughs> Sometimes they come right into my cave. Uh, Lou, you don't scare me. I know. <laughs> what can I do for you, Sue Ann? What flight are you taking to Chicago? Why? Well, I thought we should travel together for the company. I didn't know you were going. Who would miss a chance like this? Three days and nights in the city where I had my first program. It was a cooking show called... Let's talk about meat. <laughs> oh, Lou, I will show you the town. We'll go everywhere together. We'll, we'll see everything. We'll do everything. It'll give us something to remember and talk about for years afterward. So what's your flight number? I'm not going. Mary is. <laughs> you were going to Chicago instead of me? Well, to tell you the truth, Marie wasn't too crazy about the idea to begin with. Oh, don't get me wrong, Mayor. She's very understanding. And if I told her I was going, she would accept it in silence, which would last until February. <laughs> Besides, Lou chose you. Lucky! Hi, right, guys. Hi, Ted. <laughs> Bunch your suitcases to the newsroom, huh? Really? Rubbing it in, eh, Mary? No, Ted. Sure. The old Statue of Liberty play. Ted. Let Mary and me knock each other off while you pick up all the marbles. Oh, Ted, Well, I could on, say I enjoy you... yourself, Mary. I could say have a good time, but that would be phony. I'm too much an upfront guy for that, so I'm going to live with you as a friend. I hope you have a rotten stay in Chicago. I hope it rains all the time and you can't go to the beach. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. There's no beach in Chicago. Well, I just remembered that. But there's a lake, Mary. <laughs> I hope you can't make it to the lake. I hope it rains the whole time you're there. Ted, you realize, of course, this means no postcard. 
Well, who wants to picture the Empire State Building anyway? I know, I know. The Empire State Building isn't in Chicago. Well, tough. <laughs> All set for the Windy City, Mary, that toddle in town? Mm. Hey, Mr. Grant, are you sure you won't go? I'd like to go. I really would. It'd, it'd be fun. Oh, Mr. Grant, would it be fun? Lots of fun. A lot of drinking with the guys. A lot of good stuff. I'm glad you're looking forward to it. <laughs> I'd go, but I can't get away this week. I've got to get my car washed. <laughs> go to the barber shop. Buy some socks. Believe me, Mary, there are lots of good reasons. Hello, Sue Ann. Don't hello me, Mary. I find that kind of hypocrisy a little hard to swallow. Hello is hypocritical. If you were that desperate for a trip to Chicago, you have my pity. Sue Ann, but to I bribe a hard-working man like Lou Grant of a good time simply to advance your own career is deplorable. But Sue Ann, he asked me to go. Competing with a man is both aggressive and unfeminine, Mary. Now I don't know what you hope to achieve, but your ambition is certainly obvious. No, Sue Ann, Mr. Grant can't go. He's got to go to the barber and uh, get a he's got haircut, new socks. I've never heard such transparent hogwash in all my life. Neither have I. <laughs> okay. Here's your closet, bathroom, light switch, coffee maker, TV, air conditioner. You won't be needing it. We're supposed to have three straight days of cold wind and rain. <laughs> Baxter's curse strikes again. <laughs> Enjoy together. Mm -hmm. How foolish we'd be to let a few cross words come between us. Or a double door. Exactly. Right. It's kind of fun, isn't it? Like being back in college. Okay, you made your point, Ted. You want to call it off? <laughs> I even brought utensils. I may do a dab of cooking. I may do a dab of drinking. <laughs> While you unpack, dear, I'll start the ball rolling. I'm just calling my old station. There's a wonderful gang of guys there. They'd never forgive me if I didn't give them a buzz. Uh, hello, is Steve Norman there, please? Good. Would you tell him that Sue Ann Nivens is calling? You should always lock your suitcase, dear, and put the key in a safe place. In your shoes, say. In your hat. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Norman is tied up in a meeting. Then, is Arnold Sutton there? Good. Would you try him, please? And be sure and tell him it's me. When you're traveling, always pack shoes bottom up so as not to smudge other clothes. <laughs> Just remember, souls toward heaven. Oh, that's cute, Sue Ann. Cute, cute, cute. <laughs> he's where? Oh, he's in a meeting, too. Thank goodness. He's a dreadful bore. We were lucky. We? Uh, why do you say we? Is Marvin Kruger there? <laughs> Sue Ann, please, uh, don't include me in your plans, okay? Mary, don't be silly. This is Chicago. I know everybody. Yeah, but I don't want to see everybody, really. Sue Ann, I've got my own plans. You know, uh, tomorrow I've got a day full of meetings and, uh, theater tickets. I want to do some sightseeing. And tonight I'd really like to just go to bed early. Suit yourself, dear. Oh, Marvin's in a meeting, too? <laughs> well, th thank you. Anything wrinkled should be hung in the bathroom and steamed. <laughs> Put tissue paper in your shoes and don't hang sweaters. It gives you pointy shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of meeting Marvin the janitor would go to? <laughs> Hello? Yes, just a minute. Thank you. Uh, Sue Ann, you wanna 
Oh, surely, dear. Thank you. And don't forget, put slacks under the mattress during the night, so while we sleep, we press our pants. <laughs> Hello? Oh, Mr. Grant, hi. What can I do for you? Oh, uh, you know, uh, I just want to make sure you were okay. Uh, tell her I did, too. Yeah, Murray, too. Me and Murray want to make sure you were okay. That's it. Make me look like a sawhead. <laughs> and Ted. You said it, I didn't. So, uh, you behaving yourself there in that hotel room? Oh, Mr. Grant, I'm a little too tired to do anything else, but I think when I hang up, I'm just going to wash my hair, uh, read a book, and get into bed. I'm just planning a nice, quiet evening alone. Look <laughs> 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 what I found. <laughs> I want you to meet Hal and Freddie. We're not on a last name basis yet. They're here for a convention, too. Pleased to meet you, Mary. Not half as pleased as I am. If we're intruding, please tell us. Uh, not that we'll stop, but please tell us. Do you have any ice, Mary? Oh, good. She's got glasses. It's fun to make passes at girls who have glasses. <laughs> Sue Ann. I met them in the hall, Mary. They were looking for the ice machine. It's not in here. Well, we could send for some. Are you using that phone? Uh, yes. I, uh, Mr. Grant, uh, just, um, Sue Ann, could I speak to you for a minute, please? Who needs ice? Well, actually, over chilling spoils the bouquet of really fine whiskey. <laughs> this is not all that fine. You can call for ice from my room. May I, uh, sit down? Yes, please. Mr. Grant. No, it's, uh, Sue Ann and some friends. Um... <laughs> What do you mean, work fast? Mr. Grant, I know he's have... missing the time of his life. Who's Lou? He is my boss. Let me ask him, please. Oh, let, me, let me talk Mr. to him Grant? a second. <laughs> this is a, hello, Lou. Could I have... It's Freddie. Have... <laughs> I'm a friend of Mary's. Oh, yeah, Mary, listen, please? I'll tell you what you should do. You should double this little lady's salary. May I please <laughs> That's have telling them how, Mary. Certainly. <laughs> Mr. Grant, I'll see you on Monday. <laughs> speak to you for a minute alone oh i get it a little girl talk huh <laughs> well i can take a hint uh don't fight over me girls there's plenty for everybody <laughs> mary your behavior is verging on rudeness rudeness this is my room and we are your guests but i don't want guests i want to spend a quiet evening alone i am only thinking of hal and freddie dear they're two lonely men in a big city they don't know where to turn let them ask a cab Excuse us, uh, we just had a wonderful idea. If you girls don't have any plans for dinner... Uh, why don't you pick us up in ten minutes? Sue Ann! <laughs> all right, all right, make it fifteen. That'll give us time to put our faces on, you understand. Sure, but don't worry about changing, Mary. You look terrific, just the way you are. Oh, aren't you sweet? <laughs> Hurry up and change. I'm not going anywhere. Mary. Stubbornness is a weed that spoils our garden. <laughs> it poisons the soil, chokes the other plants, screens out all the sunshine. Now get the lead out. <laughs> Sue Ann, I am sure that they are very nice men, but I was really planning on spending a nice, relaxing evening in a hot tub. Life is too short, Mary. We must gather our rosebuds while we meet. You can take a hot bath relax when you're dead. <laughs> Why won't you understand that I don't want to go out to dinner? Right, Mary. If, if that's how you feel, we'll forget about Hal and Freddy. Good. Thank you. Two of us will stay here all evening, and we'll try to analyze the serious problem you have in, in dealing with other people. You know, I've always thought it would be interesting to delve into Mary Richard's psyche and and find out who you really are. It'll just take me a minute to change. <laughs> You're a good friend, Mary. It's going to be a fun evening. We're not dressed yet, but you can take us the way we are. <laughs> okay, you'll have to wait till I'm off duty. <laughs> How about some wine? Oh, now, wine is a man's department. Why don't you order it? All right, all right. Do you, uh, 
You like red or white? I would suggest, however, a robust burgundy with enough body so it's not overwhelmed by the steak au poivre. I don't care. Well, neither do I. Why don't we just forget about the wine? So, uh, what uh, convention are you fellows with? Well, now, take a guess. What do we look like? Oh, I don't want to guess. I hate that. Oh, come on. No, I hate guessing. I always guess wrong. <laughs> Go on, you'll die. <laughs> no, I won't. You'd better. <laughs> We're morticians. <laughs> I should have guessed that. Uh, no, no. <laughs> See, that's the problem. We've got this gloomy image, and we're trying to change it. And we're succeeding. <laughs> How did you get interested in uh, what you do? I like being around people. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get rich, but you drive a big car. <laughs> Who gets the pint of spots? <laughs> You see, Mary, our profession teaches us not to fear death. Really? Why should we fear it? We get a 70% discount. <laughs> now, listen, enough about us, Mary. Let's, uh, let's talk about you. Would you care to dance? Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> what, uh, what do you do for a living? Oh, how about Sue Ann? All right. What does she do for a living? I, I have a little TV show. It's really interesting, too. She's the happy homemaker. She gives tips. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> for instance, did you know that fresh flowers will last a week if their stems are dipped in salt? <laughs> Isn't that interesting? We don't need them a week. Well, it's like we always say, nothing lasts forever. <laughs> you know, since so few people carry a needle, if you'll just wrap cellophane around those remaining threads, you can save them. I don't carry cellophane. I do. <laughs> you do? <laughs> Isn't that nice? I'll bet you move like a cat on the dance floor. Say. Let's take her up to Norman's party later. Oh, good idea. Oh, no, I don't think so, really. We're both very tired. You know, after that long flight, it was uh, an hour on the plane. It'll be a real hoot, Mary. I'll bet you've never been to a mortician's party. Right. <laughs> well, why not give in? Sooner or later, we're gonna get you. <laughs> your bolt. <laughs> oh, come on, Sue Ann, don't be upset. Upset? Why should I be upset? <laughs> it was perfectly obvious. They preferred me. Can you deny it? No, no, certainly can't. Don't patronize me, Mary. I hate that. <laughs> what are you doing? I always cook when I'm really bugged. <laughs> some people clean, some people wash their hair. With me, it's chocolate fondue. I was going to use this in a Pyrex seminar tomorrow, but my needs come first. All right. Let's assume they preferred you. Hey, look, I'm really sorry. Although, why should we assume a thing like that? Because they sat next to you, talked to you, danced with you, flattered you. No, no. I laughed at their rotten mortician jokes. And at that party afterwards, it was painfully obvious that those jokes turned your stomach. But I laughed for three hours at a party where we were the only women there who weren't paid to be there. <laughs> really a good sport. Tell me something, Mary. Doesn't it ever bother you that you were the obvious favorite of a group of men who spent all their time with dead people? <laughs> Look, everyone has dates that don't work out. Rejection. That's what we're talking about, Mary. Rejection. Say it. I want to hear you say it. Rejection. <laughs> you can't even say it with conviction. So, Anne, everyone's been rejected. Everyone but you. That's not true. Tell me one instance. There have been plenty of cases. Tell me. 
one humiliating instance. <laughs> okay. Okay, all right. Um, a couple of years ago, I was dating a guy, and I decided to break it off. And then uh, three months later, when I changed my mind, I called him, and he was dating someone else. <laughs> You call that rejection? Okay, all right, maybe that wasn't the perfect I'll example. I'll tell you rejection, Mary. Rejection is dressing for dates who don't show, waiting for people who don't call, giving a party for someone who's left the country. Oh, come on, this man, what's the point? Rejection is cooking dinner for a man's entire family. Eleven people, Mary. Eleven Hungarian people. <laughs> cooking dinner for six hours and having none of them show up. You don't forget a thing like that. No, I'm sure you don't. Your butcher doesn't forget it either. <laughs> Ever try to return eight pounds of filet stripped for stroganoff? <laughs> no. That's rejection. Those are all actual true life examples of rejection. Oh, Sue Ann. And every one of them happened to my sister. <laughs> okay, I hate it tonight. I really hated it. I hate seeing a friend hurt. And the thing that makes it worse with you, Sue Ann, is you, you pretend it doesn't matter. You never let people see how you really feel. I'm not a schoolgirl, Mary. Life is too short to give in to things. Oh! Oh, will you... Oh, for pizza! Well, how do they expect you to make a chocolate fondue on a dump? I, I can't even... Oh, <laughs> Sue Ann. Oh. Hey. You know what I hate worst about crying? What? Your dimples don't show. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> It was the dullest, dreariest, most depressing weekend I ever spent in my life. Just awful. You're not saying that just to make me feel good. <laughs> Don't look to me for any sympathy, Mayor. The high point of my weekend was killing two flies with one swat. <laughs> Morning. Hi, Hello. Mayor. I was just telling Tad Furry about my weekend in Chicago. Uh-huh. Sounded like you girls were having quite a time. Oh, yeah. Well, I wanted to explain to you about that phone call. Oh, don't feel you have anything to explain to me, Mary. No, 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 Mr. Grant. Really, I would like to. Why? Because when I called you, all I could hear was shrieks and giggles and the sound of drunken laughter? No, Mr. Grant. Really, there is a perfectly logical explanation for what you heard. Oh, really, Mary? And what is it? We were having an orgy. <laughs> <laughs> you were kidding, weren't you, Mary? She's only kidding, Mary. You were kidding, weren't you, Mary? She's only kidding, Mary. You, you are, you are kidding, aren't you, Mary? Aren't you? But she's got to be kidding. I know you're kidding, Mary, aren't you? Mary? I'm sure she's kidding. <laughs> 